Hello. So we are up to chapter 16. It's now at the end of time. It's by Amy Sparks as our author. Remember that's the second book in our trilogy. The first one was really good. The second one is turned out to be equally as good. Lots of twists already. So at the competition, we knew it, didn't we? We knew the hopscotch competition was not going to be a plain and simple hopscotch competition. So it seems quite dangerous to the point that Eric is now worried that Flavagast might actually die. <gasps> Let's find out. Chapter 16. Gazillion released Flabbergast from the headlock, his fingers sparkling mauve as the dragon opened its mouth really wide, and Flabbergast took off his left fluffy slipper and shoved it inside the rather surprised dragon's mouth. A murmur of discontent mixed with a fear, few sneering chuckles ran around the crowd. Gazillion, still standing in front of Flabbergast, stared in surprise. You really are the worst wizard. Nine's heart leapt as Flabbergast dropped to his hands and knees and crawled through an outraged gazillion's legs onto number four. Flabber, cheat, said Eric uncertainly. Nine shrugged. I'll tell you when I've worked out the rules myself. Ah, what rules, muttered Spoon. Up popped the sinister jack-in-the-box again. The crimson-clad figure loomed over Flabbergast, who stayed on his hands and knees, crouching on square number four. The jack-in-the-box rocked backwards and forwards, getting lower and lower until, Gazinia, until Gazillion, waiting for it to rock backwards, leapfrogged over Flabbergast's back, landing confidently on numbers five and six. Hey! said Flabbergast. He scrambled to his feet and followed Gazillion just as the crimson jack-in-the-box rocked right down on the number four, crashing into a thousand crimson shards which floated away. Flabbergast and Gazillion rearranged themselves. Gazillion stood on the right, on number six, and Flabbergast stood, one foot, slippered, and other slipperless, on number five. Then they waited. Nine held her breath. The crowd held their breath. Flabbergast and the Gazillion held their breath. Suddenly, deathly pale arms shot upwards, two out of each of the squares, grabbing the wizard's shins. Gazillion began shooting magic at the hands that held him, and Flavagast yelled as he turned and twisted, trying to shake it off. But the pale fists were locked tight. A third arm shot up from number five and grabbed Flavagast's cloak. A fourth arm clamped itself around Flavagast's throat, and a fifth snatched his indigo hat, thrusting its fist inside the pointed peak and spinning it around. Ah, the lad's doomed, said Spoon. Flavagast made a choking noise. His eyes began to bulge. Help me, he croaked, looking at Gazillion. Never, said Gazillion, zapping a mauve mitten onto one of the confused-looking hands attacking him. This is hopscotch, Flavagast. Every wizard for himself. Eric dropped Nine's hand and covered his eyes. Panic in Nine's chest exploded into words. Oh, come on, Flabbergast! Flabbergast's fingers scrabbled desperately at the hand at his throat, finally prizing it free. He flung it to one side, but it started swinging back towards him. Flabbergast frantically released the fastener of his cloak, and it dropped, along with the arm holding it, down to the hopscotch square. The throat-grabbing arm was heading right for Flabbergast's throat again. Punch it! Punch it, yelled Nine, as several witches and wizards turned round to stare at her. Flavagast swung his fist at the incoming hand and knocked it back down again. It woozily tried and failed to rise up again. Yes, Nine shouted out as Eric peeped between his thick fingers. Flavagast prized the hands from one of his shins, then gave it a really good kick, leaving it lying motionless on the ground. Ah, come on, lad roared spoons in Nine's ear. The judges on the platform looked at each other, confused and frowning. Where's his magic? Gazillion pointed at Flabbergast. This is all cheating. He's right, Nine said, turning to Spoon. Where is his magic? She stared at Flabbergast as the penny dropped. I don't, I don't think he's rusty. I think he's actually lost his magic altogether. Rules, said Ophelia from the judges' table. 
the message which sighed and rolled at the scroll and began to read. Two of the white arms on Gazillion Square began slapping each other and trying to steal the mitten. Taking this chance, Gazillion leapt into, onto number seven and promptly the square turned to bog like sludge and he disappeared up to his waist. Come on, Flabbergast, called Nine, as the wizard prized the other hand from his shin and kicked it to the ground. Yes! Eric slowly dropped his hands from his face and gave a wonky, tusky grin. Flabbergast's hat still spun on the final hand, but Flabbergast ignored it. Instead, he placed his hands on Gazillion's turnip head head and leapfrogged over him this time, landing on eight and nine. Yes! said nine. Then her face fell. No! A huge wall of blue fire whooshed up straight in front of him. And on the line where the number ten box joined the eight and nine, Flabbergast stood motionless, staring at the flame. Meanwhile, Gazillion was summoning mauve upright poles from his fingertips and placing them either side of him. Gazillion grabbed the poles and heaved himself out of the sludge. He stepped forwards onto eight and nine behind Flabbergast and shoved him towards the flames. Oi! yelled nine from the side. Flame big! said Eric, wringing his tail. Flame bad! Gazillion's bad! said nine. Flabbergast shuffled back, almost pushing Gazillion off the squares. Gazillion reached his arms either side of Flabbergast and shot mauve sparkly threads towards the flame wall. You shall not succeed, Flabbergast, the unworthy, he bellowed. A plate-sized mauve fringed hole was burning into the blue frame. Nine could just see the number ten through it on the ground. The final number. Come on, Flabbergast, she yelled. You're nearly there. I shall discover who turniped me... And have my revenge, said Gazillion. The tower is within my reach, Flabbergast. Ah, get to that tower, lad, Spoon roared from Nine's shoulder. Stop those flaming hookups or we're doomed. Nine's heart thumped as she watched the two wizards pushing and now shoving and elbowing as the hole in the blue flame grew bigger and bigger and then big enough to step through. Flabbergast clenched his jaw and with a final push at Gazillion, he threw himself through the hole and tumbled forwards. But Gazillion grabbed Flabbergast and as he leapt, then the two tangled wizards crashed down onto number 10 and vanished from view. <gasps> so, looks like they've both landed on number 10 and they've both vanished. So have they both made it to the Tower of Truth or will there only be one true winner? find out in the next chapter.